Great pleasure to be here and speaking to you. So let's get that started. One of the most uh, common use cases for tokens uh, is API authentication. You, ha you probably uh, already have some experience building APIs. Yeah, I see some nods heading, good. Uh, so basically, we exchange the user credentials for um, a random, unique identifier which is the token. That token is passed to the next requests so that the server can say, OK, this, th this token belongs, is linked to this user. So I, I can s check about permissions, expiration, and everything. And although it sounds really simple, it's not just like that. We often have to link all of this information uh, and it's stored in a sto storage layer, like a database or a cache. Some years ago, I had a mission just like that. The plan was really clear. We are going to store everything in a table, right? Database table, so columns for expiration date, what is the user, uh, what is the scope of the token, uh, and what are the audience. Uh, and it was just a mess. Everything was really, really complex. And to check if the token was just expired or not, I needed to hit the database. And if you're building a high-performance API, in you doing a query to just check that, it's quite expensive to say, OK, your token is invalid. Go ahead. Uh, and to keep things consistent, I had to have some background tasks saying, OK, uh, clean up this table because I can't have too many invalid tokens, expired tokens, whatever. And I was really happy, really happy. All the complexity was actually draining me. And the only thought I had was, that must be something simpler. Come on. Uh, we're uh, software engineers. We can build something simpler. And I must say that if you were uh, in that position, you will probably be very tired, depressed, or willing to give up on everything. Putting an end to this, eating lots of carbonara, ravioli, and lasagna, right? It's a good, which is a good plan, but not me. I am uh, Luis Cobucci, and I hardly give up. I was born in Brazil some centuries ago, and I currently live in Amsterdam, working together with Rafael at Usabila, creating some great tasks and uh, uh, great tools to collect and analyze customer feedback. In my spare time, I also help a uh, doctoring team and Amsterdam PHP team. Okay, uh, to solve that issue, to answer that question, is there something simpler? I had to do a lot of research. And I've uh, found some interesting solutions. But the, the one that I really liked uh, it's called Jose or Jose, whatever. Uh, and it's basically uh, a set of specs that works with uh, JSON objects to sign things and to encrypt things. It all started in 2012 and it became a standard in 2015. Uh, but you're here to actually see a JSON web token, right? Are you ready for this? OK, so yeah, that was great. This is a JSON web token. Again, please. Oh, yeah, awesome. <laughs> um, 
what are the ideas that you have when you look at this? Besides of, yay! Sorry? It's encoded. It, it, it seems like base 64, right? For those had do, uh, that don't know what a base 64 uh, encoded string, just keep one thing in mind. It's not encryption. That solves everything. But essentially, it's um, an algorithm that uh, helps you to put binary data into ASCII characters without having a mass. Um, it uses uh, lowercase and uppercase A to Z characters, 0 to 9, plus um, uh, and slashes, and also equal signs as padding characters. So you can see that there's some dots, and that's not part of base 64. Uh, all uh, based on the specs, the dots are, are defined as separators. So if we, we basically split the string, we'll see two parts of that. Um, let's uh, change one thing. It's not really base64. It's a variation of it called base64 URL. It's basically the same thing, but they replace some characters. So applying a base64 encoding, uh, instead of having the first choice, you have this second one. Slightly different, but it makes the URL safe to be passed as query string or uh, URL uh, path, right? In PHP, to create uh, such a uh, string, you need to do something like this. So you will do a base64 encoding, and then uh, you just replace the characters and remove all the padding uh, at the end. Pretty simple. To do the other way around, you have something like this. You have to calculate the, the padding to add the basically the, the equal signs, and then convert it back, and finally decode using base64. Applying that algorithm into this string, you have uh, like the, the two strings separated, you have this. And here is the JSON. Really, really simple, right? And uh, you now start to think, OK, I have so many possibilities, uh, so uh, different use cases to use. Let's take a look on that. We ha the first one, the common one, is about authentication. So you have a client and an API, right? The client, let's say it's a JavaScript application, a single page application that sends the request to the, to the server. The first request is basically to uh, s give, get the, the token based on the credentials. So I send the, the client send this. Uh, please create me a new authentication, and it's gonna. Uh, my credentials are this. Uh, the server processes this, created to, uh, something that says, "Okay, uh, I am the issuer of this token. Uh, this token is only permitted to that client, and it will expire in such time." This will be converted to a string, and the string will basically. Uh, be sent to the client as a JSON object or whatever. Uh, next step is basically the client sending a request with the authorization token. Uh, authorization header, so the token is there. Uh, and f uh, when we receive such requests, we will basically do some validation on this token, saying, OK, is the signature valid? Uh, is the client allowed to, to use that? Uh, is that the accepted, uh, the expected issue, uh, and can it be used right now? Is it, isn't it expired, or whatever? That is really uh, simple, and JSON Web Tokens. Since you can, you have a JSON object, you can just put all this information inside of the token and validate that. Next use case is about session. 
and that's quite controversial because people start to uh, they sometimes don't understand why would you uh, use such thing for sessions let's understand the common use case in sessions is uh, you have you you basically have a file containing the session data right uh, that is essentially created when you do a session start and save some data in the, the session variable or use a framework to do that. And that session will uh, receive an, an identifier that points to that file, right? Uh, when the client makes a request, it is basically sending a cookie saying, OK, this is my session. Please do whatever you have to do, but understand that I'm using this data and you have the information there. The server will process this and say, OK, you're the user that has some data stored on the fi file A. Oh, right? But what happens if you have this scenario? If you have a load balancer in, in the middle and three web service s s services, you have like, OK, uh, if I start the session on, on the web server one, and then I go to the web server too because I have a round robin uh, set top in the, my load balancer. I won't have the data there. So you have essentially uh, some options, usually two. The first one is okay. I will not store the the session data in uh, the file system. I will use a caching layer or a database. To, so I can share among the three web servers. The other option is to have sticky sessions. Sticky sessions basically uh, is when the load balancer uh, knows which server uh, it sends uh, it sent the the user to. So uh, the client goes into the load balancer and starts a new session on the web server one. The next uh, request from this same client will always go to the same web server. So you won't have issues uh, like, OK, the session data does not exist, right? But that creates some limitations, because your load balancer needs to know about all of things and to track the clients. Using a JSON web token here will basically allow you to send the session data to uh, any web server because the data is stored as a JSON object in the token. So you can pass anything there. It's quite handy, but it has some limitations. And that is really important to understand. Uh, if I the, the session, uh, the token is basically encoded. It's not encrypted. So anyone can just open the token and read the data that is in there. So you, will n you should not store private data uh, in the session token. Uh, you cannot, uh, using the library that I, I'm about to show you, you cannot invalidate the token. You have to do manual actions there. Uh, it increases the network traffic because the, the information is quite bigger than just a single identifier because you have all the data there. Uh, if you have racing, uh, race conditions, you, you might generate a lot of traffic there. And some, uh, if you want to have a lot of data in the, 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 the session, uh, you might have uh, some limitations because some browsers say, OK, you, you will not be able to store all this data in a cookie. So you need to be really careful and understand that in order to use uh, JSON web tokens for sessions. But if you really want to do that, there is this library that uh, Maluquinho, me, and uh, uh, Marco wrote some couple years ago, and it works really well. Uh, there are some, I think the the website that you can see the PHP internals uh, discussions in a nice way th with threads and everything uses that library because it's not really critical in terms of security. It's uh, just about to, OK, here is your feed, whatever, the, the things you want to follow. You want more. What are the other use cases that you can have? Um, 
how many of you uh, ever had to create some, uh, I don't know, reset password link? That's a really good use case because you can generate the token. Uh, that token uh, will have the information about expiration, uh, the scope of uh, what this token can do. It's not like, okay, uh, I'm going to reset the password and be uh, able to uh, do anything inside of the website. You need to secure that area. But you can store everything and pass it around. It's just a link. Uh, and since it is base64 URL, you can do that. It's safe. Uh, you can do CSRF validations using that as well. There are some libraries to do that. And if you want to do more, uh, just use your imagination, to be honest, because there are plenty of possibilities that are not really related to uh, authentication, but it's related to identification of some resource. So you can uh, have self-contained tokens to do that. But Let's try to understand a bit more how the tokens work and how uh, we should use them. This was a token that uh, we were working before. And you can see that there are two uh, different parts. The first one is the headers. Uh, it basically contains all the metadata that you need to uh, note in order to pass the token properly. Uh, if you if in this case for JSON Web Tokens, the type will always be JWT. But these are the set of specs. Basically, uh, they, they also specify ways to create uh, keys to sign things uh, or to encrypt things, how, uh, encrypted objects. So you, you have different uh, JSON objects, but for JSON Web Tokens, this is basically uh, what you're going to have. The other part is the list of claims, as the data that you want to have in the token. There are three uh, different categories in, uh, of claims, the private one, public, and registered claims. The private claims are about uh, things that a client and uh, an issuer they sat together and say, OK, I'm going to send a, a claim called user, and it will have the user ID and the name of the user. Uh, so it's between the both of us. And if, if you issue a token in a different uh, server, you, will have, uh, you might have a, the same claim with a different meaning. So that's what private uh, claims are about. You can have different meanings across different uh, issues. Public uh, claims are basically they were uh, private claims once, but they became so popular that different issues they were using and with the same meaning that they start to decide, okay, let's standardize this uh, new uh, claim so that we don't we can all understand everything. And if he, if our client uses different uh, issues there will be no confusion. Registered claims are the official ones. They are registered in uh, the IANA, and they can never have, uh, can, can never be used uh, with a different meaning. This is the list of uh, registered uh, claims. Basically, there are just seven f f at this moment. And it's really important to say that these first four here, they are case, case sensitive. So if you, p you can pass uh, a string, or in this case of the, the, the second one, you can also pass a URL. But if you mix uh, lowercase and uppercase characters, they will have different uh, validation uh, rules. The first, uh, the, the first one is uh, the identifier of the token. It's really handy to have uh, an identifier to say, OK, uh, this is a unique uh, way uh, to know what is the token. So if you want to, to link that uh, ID with different things, you can. 
The second is the issuer of the token. It's basically saying, okay, I was the one that created that token, and if I receive any token that wasn't created by me, I will just reject. The audience uh, is a list. Uh, it, it can be just a string or a list of strings that says, okay, uh, y this token is permitted to be used uh, by this client or for this application. If you have a, I don't know, a microservice um, structure, you, you might create a token that is only allowed on the mi microservice A, B, and C. Uh, if someone tries to uh, do a request to the web's, uh, uh, the microservices D, it won't be able. The token will have that information. The subject is uh, the, the last one of the left side, and is about uh, what is uh, the token related to? What is the meaning of it? Because, as I said, you can have a token for authentication, for reset password, uh, logging uh, from emails, uh, for example. And, and then uh, the subject will have to be used for different meanings, uh, for but the same purpose. They will, uh, they, the, the subject basically says, okay, uh, this is an authentication token, it will be sent to the authentication layer. If it is a reset password, it won't be sent to the authentication. It will, you will do a different thing. And the last three ones are about uh, the date uh, of the token to set some limits. The first is when the token was issued. The second is when the token expires. And the third is um, uh, the token can only be used after this time. So if I issue a token uh, right now, I can say uh, it can only be used five minutes from now and it will expire in, th in 30 minutes. So you, you, you can play around with these uh, arguments and have a fine-grained control of how you want to expire the tokens. Uh, let's uh, get back to this. This is the general al al uh, algorithm. You have the list of headers, a dot, a list of claims, both uh, in encoded using base64 URL, and a last dot. Applying this here, you have this uh, token. But can you trust it? Not yet, exactly, because uh, anyone can just modify the token. So you have to have a way to uh, ensure that the token wasn't changed. Uh, to do that, we use signatures. Based on the encoded uh, header and the encoded uh, claim, we use that as a payload for a algor uh, an algorithm uh, to create a signature with a key. So let's say I'm creating a... Um, SHA-256 signature, I'll basically apply this with uh, my key that only I know and nobody has access to it. And nobody will be able to modify the, the token because the signature won't match. Only me. Uh, I, I'm the only one that knows the, the key. The signature is also encoded because usually signatures are uh, binary. So you have to do this, otherwise you cannot pass it around on URLs and other things. And the algorithm for creating a token uh, with PHP will be just like this, using the same functions that we declared before. It's really simple, right? Uh, applying this algorithm with these headers and this key, we will have this token. Great. Now. If something changes in the payload part, the green one, it means that uh, the signature won't match and you can just say goodbye. I don't want you here in my server. You want more PHP, so let's take a look on uh, different options. Uh, three years ago, I created this library. Uh, since everybody's using PHP uh, 7.1, I'm dropping support of PHP 5 and 7 uh, on the next major release. 
Um, this is how it looks like. Uh, because you don't want to have a function that is that really allow that only allows you to uh, create tokens with uh, I don't know this particular uh, ar uh, algorithm to create a signature. So you want to be able to vary that, and that library al uh, helps you to do that. The first thing you have to do is create a configuration object. The configuration object is basically a dependency injection uh, container because you have a lot of things uh, going. In, uh, under the hood here in this library. So I've tried to, to simplify. You, I'm just saying, okay, I'm creating a configuration for an asymmetric signal. Uh, do you know what's the difference between a symmetric and asymmetric uh, algorithm? Yeah? Okay. So for the ones that don't know, it's basically uh, the asymmetric uh, uses two keys to, v to one to create the token, no, the signature, and the other to validate the signature. A symmetric uh, algorithm will always use the same key. So uh, m using a asymmetric uh, key is better in terms of security because you, you, you can make your verification key public and you can share among different servers, but only you will have access to the, the private key, right? Uh, and you won't have any issue with that. So this is creating, uh, this is using RSA, and using this configuration, we're able to do this. Uh, I'm basically creating a builder of the token using the, the configuration object, uh, and I'm saying, okay, the token will have this ID, uh, is issued by me, allowed to be used on this, this, and this client. It, it is being issued right now. Uh, it can only be used after 30 minutes from now and uh, will expire in an hour. Right? So, if you, uh, how long the token will be valid for? Exactly. So you, you have this, uh, I'm giving 30 seconds, just for example, but I could say, okay, it's valid uh, after five minutes from now, if you want to have on password reset, I don't know. Uh, here I'm using a um, private claim saying, okay, the user ID is one, period. And then I'm basically signing the, uh, signing the token and I create a, a object that has uh, an object that has everything there: the list of audience, the list of uh, the the my public, uh, my private claim, and all the register claims I have. This object is immutable. You cannot change anything in there. If you want to modify that, you have to issue a new token because yeah, tokens are immutable. They are just a string, right? Uh, if you want to have the the string representation. Uh, of this, you have this beautiful string. You can see that most of it is basically the signature because RSA creates a quite big signature and also safer. If you want to parse a token, again, you use the, the configuration ob uh, object, you get the parser and just say parse. From that this string, you have an object back. And uh, if you want to validate the token, it's basically that. I'm saying, okay, this is the list of constraints I have. Uh, it, the, the token must be issued by either this or uh, the foo bar or bar foo uh, servers. And it, I it should be at least it permitted for this client and it, it should be valid right now. Uh, it, it must be signed with this uh, algorithm and that verification key. Then you can validate using uh, validate or assert. Validate will just return true or fal false. If uh, uh, you have uh, any constraint that fails, you will have false here. Assert will throw you uh, an exception. Basically that. But there are more options, in especially for PHP. 
you go to this website, uh, besides of the, the list of libraries that you can use with different languages, PHP, JavaScript, uh, Node, uh, Python, Ruby, whatever, uh, you can also ha uh, have access to a debugger where you can paste uh, a token there and see what's inside there because it's just encoded. And you can also validate the, the signature if, if you want. Based on the, these l years that I'm maintaining this library, uh, I've been asked for different questions. And I, I usually try to bring them uh, to people as well. So the first question is, is a JSON Web Token a replacement for OAuth 2? And the answer is no. You can, uh, in fact, you can use them together. So I don't know how familiar you are with OAuth 2, but you, you have basically an access token and a uh, refresh token. They are usually uh, created using, again, a random uh, algorithm. You can make uh, the access key a JSON web token. That's, uh, if I'm not wrong, Spotify and Google does that. Uh, if you, uh, they, they do that. And, and if you want to use that in PHP, the, the OAuth server implementation from the League of Extraordinary Packages, PHP packages, they have a very good implementation that uses my library. Uh, also, they also have support for Firebase JWT, if, if I'm not wrong. Um, the other question is, which algorithm should I use? Because you have many options in, uh, in to create the signature. The one that is really simple is the HMAC that will use a symmetric key. So you have the same key to sign and verify the token. That's not really uh, secure if you're creating an API, for example. Uh, then I will just say use RSA or uh, ECDSA. The difference between them is RSA is it creates a, a bigger signature, but it's faster to validate the signature and it's more uh, adopted. So UB keys they use RSA under the hood and different uh, validation signature uh, implement JWT implementations they mostly support RSA. So I'll just say stick with that. You see they say uh, they will have a short uh, shorter uh, signature, but it will take a bit more to validate it. So you have all the options. I recommend RSA. How do I block tokens? Let's say that you, in your software, you, you want to block users for a certain reason. Uh, if you have that uh, need, then you should use either a whitelist or a blacklist to evict the token. A blacklist will basically say, during the, the validation of my token, I will, say, I, I will see if the identifier of the token is in the blacklist. If it is, goodbye, you're not going to, to do anything. Uh, if it is not, you can just proceed with the request. If you need to do uh, the other way around um, and, and work with a whitelist uh, to be able to, uh, I don't know, block all the, the tokens that are related to a certain user, you can use a whitelist. So you check, okay, uh, I need, uh, I'm looking uh, for a, t a token that is related to the user that I have in the token and also this identifier. Do I have it there? No, block it. And then you maintain that list with your application and just populate it. Okay, I create a token, I will add the identifier and link it to the user. So I have everything. If I want to revoke uh, the tokens from a particular user, I can just say, uh, hey, uh, storage layer, remove all the tokens for, uh, related to this user. So it's up to you to choose a strategy to revoke tokens and block users. How much data can I store into a JSON Web Token? It really depends. 
uh, if you're using uh, a JSON Web Token uh, as query parameter, you will have some limitations. If your use case is different, you can store as much as data as you want to. So again, up to you. The general recommendation is keep things simpler, simple and short, because it will be passed on each request. So if you have an API, your client will be sending this token as a header. You have to think on what's your problem and how to use it. And finally, how to secure the token. The token, uh, as we discussed, it is just encoded. If you want to secure the data inside of the token, you have to encrypt it. Uh, inside of the, the Jose specs, you have JSON Web Encryption. JSON Web Encryption is about how to create uh, encrypted strings using JSON and having a base64 encoded string, 64 URL. Uh, you can also use it to uh, encode tokens, and then they are completely uh, safe in terms of uh, nobody will have access to the data that you have inside of the token. Uh, and that's it. Thank you very much. Do you have... Do you have any questions?